what's the differences like between investing into commercial versus residential? Residential, mm. yeah. So it really comes down to what your long-term goals are. Yeah. And also comes down to what your current financial capacity is. Right. So let me explain what I mean. So with commercial properties, without a doubt, yeah. the potential to make a bigger profit yeah. is there. Okay. Okay. Because because with um, commercial properties, there's a lot more creative ways you can add value and do a lot of stuff. Right. And you can make massive profits. Right. But. On the flip side, commercial properties are also more complicated and that's why they're also riskier. Right. So it really comes down to you know, what your long-term goals are, what your risk appetite is, mm-hmm. and also what your current financial capacity is. Right. So one of the biggest risks mm-hmm. with commercial property, which a lot of people don't know, is the potential vacancy rate. Right. Okay. So with residential, particularly in today's market, you know, worst case scenario, you have your property vacant for maybe three weeks, four mm. weeks max. You'll yeah. always find a tenant, someone to live in it. Yeah. With commercial properties, it's not unusual to have a vacant for three months, six months, twelve months. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in some instances, it's not uncommon mm-hmm. at all. So, you know, if you had a strong balance sheet mm-hmm. that you're able to absorb the vacancies in commercial properties, then I would say, yeah, sure, look, then you know, commercial properties in the long run is probably gonna make you more money. Mm-hmm. But for most people that you're describing, they can't afford to hold that property six months vacant. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's say you buy a half a million dollar commercial property, okay. you know, it's gonna cost you at least two or three grand a month just to hold it. Yeah. You know, your mortgage repayments and all that type of stuff. Yeah. For most people, they can't afford That's true. that right Mm. Um, so that's the key difference so generally speaking what I always say is um, if if your budget is under a million dollars you're probably better off going with residential right um, because uh, of the risk that I just mentioned Mm. and also you know when you've got a budget of less than a million dollars you're limited to what you can buy in commercial. Most likely you probably buy something that's a strata. Small warehouse. Small warehouse, <clears throat> maybe a shop, mm. office, etc. So because um, you're buying properties of that nature, you've got very little value right opportunity. Right. Okay. And also because you're buying a smaller property, most likely you just can have one tenant mm. in place. Whereas if you go above a million dollars, one, two million dollars, or even higher, mm-hmm. you know, you can now potentially buy a larger property with multiple tenants. Right. So maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a, a little, little shopping center. Okay. Maybe there's, you know, three or four tenants mm-hmm. in there. So your vacancy risk gets Close. lowered mm-hmm. because, you know, when you have one vacant, you still have three tenants paying your rent. That's true. Yeah. And also, when, when that time comes for you to sell the property, you know, you might be able to do some value add to it. Maybe there's, maybe there's a, a bit of land in the back where you can, you know, extend the building, maybe you can refurb, maybe you can restructure the lease mm-hmm. and all that type of stuff. Whereas with residential, there's really not, there's a limitation of what you can do. Yeah. You know, um, you, maybe you can build, build a granny flat, maybe you can do kitchen. a subdivision, new k- kitchen, all that type of stuff. So it's limited. Yeah. So, you know, if you have the ability to go commercial, mm-hmm. without a doubt, commercial is a fast track way of building your wealth because right. the profit margin is a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. As long as you can handle the risk, the downside of things. Right. Okay. So would you would you say then commercial is more a rich man's game? Like you, you have to be someone that's, you know, on a at least from a corporate background, you're uh-huh. on a very, very, you know, sizable income salary package. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I foresee that commercial is not something that a person that is 100k a year get into, or successful uh, anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, especially if you've got to like, hold that risk mm-hmm. of potentially a one year of no tenant. Mm-hmm. Um, would you say, what type of person would you say is best suited for commercial then? So I think there are two type of commercial property buyers. One are owner occupiers. So somebody okay. who wants to put their own business in there. Okay. okay? Yeah. So let's say I own a dry cleaning business. Yeah. And I find a nice little shop front, 
in a busy street where I can guarantee I'm going to get customers, yeah. then maybe it makes sense for me to buy the property because then I can guarantee my business can stay there yeah. for a long time. Yeah. So I don't have the risk of getting kicked, kicked out, out. Yeah. and things like that. So that would make sense for an owner of the pie with a sustainable business. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one, obviously, the, the investors. Yeah. Now, so if you're an investor, um, I mean, there's nothing stopping you from buying a two, three hundred thousand dollar commercial property. But like I said, my recommendations would be you lean towards residential, and I explain the numbers in a second. Yeah. So if you want to buy something that's above a million dollars, where you can actually make proper money mm. in commercial property, then you probably need at least. Three hundred thousand dollars of cash yeah. to use as a down payment, and you probably need to be earning yeah, at least six figures yeah. in order for you to, to do that. Would that be like six figures as in a hundred or like two hundred, three hundred? Because it doesn't feel like anyone on a hundred nowadays can get by with much. Yeah, that's the reality of it. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, you know, it it, it it comes down to the property itself. So what right. I mean by that is, if you have a good tenant that's paying you decent rent on a you know, long-term rent, le- lease, beg your pardon. Like a five, five plus five. Five plus five, yeah. you know, 10 year lease, whatever. Mm. Then you can actually go to the bank and ask for a lease stock loan. Oh, okay. okay. So the lease stock loan takes into consideration just what the tenant is paying. Yeah. So they don't take into consideration what the investor is making. Right. Okay. Um, so, you know, so you might be able to buy the commercial property even if you're earning 30 grand a a, a year, as long as the property itself has a good tenant paying good rent. Right, so the the way it works is, let me try to get it very straight so that Mm. everyone can understand. Yes. So there's already, this is, we're talking about a commercial property, not a brand new one, but one that has an existing tenant. Yep. And you're taking over essentially the ownership of that property with an existing tenant inside, who are paying an X amount. So the bank will factor that in, into borrowing or into, you know, how you purchase and so you have the deposit for yep. this property. Yep. Then, and, and whatever number you're borrowing, the bank already knows that, hey, they're already gonna make payments for the next 10 years. So yes. it reduces risk for them. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, yeah, so, you know, um, commercial property, residential property is a slightly different ball game. Yeah. Um, you know, commercial property is really good for people who have very limited borrowing capacity right yeah. now, but have a big deposit. Right, gotcha. Yeah, so those are the type of people that can really take advantage of commercial property right, right. now. But generally speaking, um, uh, you know, back to your original question, is it a rich man's game? I will say um, people who have a, uh, a stronger financial capacity would definitely you know, be more suited for commercial properties. Gotcha. Because um, it's not about making the money, it's about maintaining the risks. Mm. And, right. you know, if, and if you're making 30 grand a year and, and the tenant goes broke, goes bust, yeah. right, how, how will you now Right able to write out the next 12 months. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so that's why it is more advantageous for people who have a stronger financial capacity to go into commercial. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what if, what if, like, let's just say I myself can't afford this commercial property, but uh-huh. I want to go and buy this commercial property. Actually, before we even get into that, what's the down payment for, like, for commercial? Because usually, you know, for residential, you can get away with 0% deposit yeah. because you can obviously have someone a guarantor. Yeah. Um, you can, nowadays, there's the first home buyer scheme, so 5%, yep. uh, 10%, yep. 20% for yep. residential. What about for commercial? What's the deposit like there? Yeah, so you raised a really good point. So um, residential, is, um, it, it's easy to get into yeah. for all those reasons that you mentioned. Commercial, generally speaking, the banks want uh, a 30% deposit. 30%, yes. wow. Okay. In, some, in some cases, they'll do 25 and 20, Yeah. Um, but obviously the interest rates go up. Of course. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as a rule of thumb, you probably need about 30%. Okay. So yeah. we're talking about at least 300k cash. Yeah. 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 To play a, a decent commercial game. Actually. Yes. That's yeah. right. That's right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And, and so then back to the point, let's just say I can't afford that myself mm. um, and I don't want to like maintain that risk myself. Is it a smart idea then to grab three other friends who have 100k each cash and we can spread that risk and go into commercial, play that game? Uh, potentially, yes. So let me let me illustrate the point here. Okay. Okay. So it comes down to what is the long term vision. Gotcha. Okay. So if you're here to just make a quick buck mm-hmm. and you want to flip properties, then yeah, absolutely. I think like 
you know, if you've got a few friends together and you're able to flip a commercial property and yeah. double your money in you know, 12 to 24 months, yeah. I think that makes perfect sense. Of course. Okay. But let's say you don't have the luxury of your friends. Yeah. Okay. And let's say you, you, you have the $300,000. Uh, sorry, you have the $100,000. Yeah. What can you do? Okay. Well, then you probably have to, what I call using a stepping stone okay. strategy where you probably have to park your money in residential. Yeah. Buy residential in a high growth area, right. so you get maximum capital gains quickly. Yeah, but have to be careful. You're buying property that you can still service alone. Right. Okay. So it's not eating into too much of your cash flow. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So you know, let's say you had a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Roughly speaking, you could probably buy a, a five hundred thousand dollar property. Yeah. Okay. So if you can buy a five hundred thousand dollar property with massive growth potential. You know, maybe in two or three years' time, that probably will be worth six fifty, seven hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we've seen examples of that um, the last two years in Southeast Queensland, where we've seen yeah. properties literally go from four fifty to seven hundred in two years' time. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Um, and there are still markets like that across Australia. Yeah. Right now, yeah. as we're speaking. So, so let's say you park your money in the right spot, you bought a bought the right property, and you wait for two years for the capital growth. Yeah. Now. That property has got three hundred thousand dollars equity. Yeah. Then what you might do is you either sell it or you refinance it. Mm -hmm. That's where you get the three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And then you can start playing right. commercial property again. So taking a step back to go forwards, essentially, you know, take my hundred k and start off with a lower level uh, property. Yep. Um, in potentially not even a state like New South Wales, and go external, um, and then take that equity. I've got to wait now two or three years, but yes. at least then it allows me to play with money that didn't exist before. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's smart. Right. That's smart. So